Punks and Retro Nerds, it's Tommy the Hammer bringing you something a little bit special today. We're going to be checking out an independent horror film from Dayton, Ohio called The Bastard. And it's directed by Garth Smiley, who sent me a copy of his film, Snail Mail. So I'm going to pop this fucker into my DVD player and give it a peek. And uh, you guys are going to be checking out the trailers. That's right, pluralized two of them. I decided to put them end to end. And uh, when we get back, we're going to be discussing the movie The Bastard. Don't go nowhere. In a town caught in the death grip of a violent new street drug. There exists a cop, and a man who should never have fucked with his donuts. Coming soon from PCP Films, do not miss the thrilling debut of The Bastard. See a vegan eaten alive. See a virgin losing his head. See a bomb murdering the frog. See The Bastard. watching the independent horror film The Bastard and before I get into my overall review of this movie I feel it's rather important to explain to my audience um, what exactly this type of horror film is. If any of you guys are familiar with the filmed on video market of the late 80s and early 1990s um, then you pretty much have a good idea of what type of movie The Bastard is. Basically, this is DIY horror um, epitomized. <laughs> Garth Smiley, who's uh, in the actual movie The Bastard, that he cares deeply of um, you know the subgenre of filmed on video horror. And when I say that, I'm talking about movies like uh, you know Cannibal Campout. Even here in Kent, Ohio, we have a movie called The Killer Nerd, which is essentially a filmed on video uh, horror film. And um, I do realize that movies like that, um, you know, movies like that are an acquired taste. They're not for everybody, and not everybody understands or gets what um, this little subgenre or subculture of horror movies is kind of going for. Some of the special effects are actually pretty enjoyable. There's a lot of blood splatter, a lot of fake prosthetics, um, you know, a lot of what I can assume is corn syrup. If I was to, you know, voice, you know, a main complaint about the movie is that the overall visual distortion kind of gets in the way. I'm not sure exactly what camera was being utilized for the cinematography, um, but it's definitely not high def. And uh, coupled with the fact that there is a visual distortion going on, it really kind of makes some of the visuals hard to make out. Uh, Plot-wise, the movie is all over the place. <laughs> And uh, dialogue-wise, I'd have to say that that's probably where this movie's strongest suit resides, is uh, basically the writing. Uh, some of the jokes and setups really had me laughing. 
Uh, other parts, not so much. But you know, when you're doing a um, hodgepodge, you know, DIY horror film such as this, um, some stuff sticks, other stuff not so much. Overall, I'd have to say that the movie really did kind of remind me of the trauma horror movies. Uh, there is definitely kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, attitude, and uh, you know, the, the overall film just has this kind of punk rock vibe to it, which I really appreciated. If I was to give the movie a uh, star count out of 10, um, I'd have to say I give this one, I give this one a four and a half of, or a five. Um, it's not the best DIY horror film I've ever seen, but you know what? There's a lot of heart and soul that went behind it. And, uh, you know, for that alone, I gotta give it some credit. So, overall, thanks for sending me the movie, Garth. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to mail this for me. It was a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing more movies from you and everyone else involved in this production.